is is it its own holiday is it the end of sukkot um is it as holy as the beginning days of sukkot as the beginning and end of pesach or shavuot what is this day and i came across a a really beautiful devar torah by a teacher of mine named rabbi eliezer diamond and he he was I went through five and a half years of rabbinical school at JTS without having him as a professor, even though he taught a lot of classes. And I happened to walk into his class my last semester at JTS with one foot out the door, and he he was the perfect teacher. And he and he would have been the perfect teacher anytime I would have walked into his class because he's one of those teachers who is demanding yet leads with heart and is really devoted not only to the subject, but to the subjects in his classroom. And he, he brought that foot that was out of the door of JTS back in. And this is important for you to know, because when I read his Devar Torah, I was able to hear his voice. And it was able to seep into my memory in a way that a written Devar Torah usually um, eludes that kind of, in, that kind of impact usually eludes the reader. And he, he wrote a Devar Torah about what Shemini Atzer is. And he cited a Midrash by Rashi. It really, it, it completely shifted the way I see this holiday. The way I experience it, that may be something different, but at least the way I see it. But before we get there, what, we have to talk about what Shmini Atzeret is. Okay, I opened by saying that it's a joke, you know, about this marathon that keeps going and going. Um, it is a time that we often complain about the holidays. You know, we're here. You're here on Zoom. We've been here for a while now. Um, it's a day that it's, it's really unclear what its distinct identity is. It's unclear. And it's the kind of it's the kind of holiday that if you asked a group of people like yourselves, those who come to show often what Shmini Atzeret is, you would get a lot of people who might have an idea. And I think a lot of people kind of grasping at an idea who can talk around something without really knowing what it is. It's kind of on the tip of your tongue, but not fully there. So let's think about what this word is. I asked you what the, the word means. Judy said it means end. Did anyone else come up with a different meaning for the word? Yeah, Roberta. A solemn gathering. All right. So it's a, Roberta said it's a, a solemn gathering, and that's from... That's not the Hertz. That's a a time. Yeah, yeah, no. The Hertz the Hertz would be a little farther afield than that. Um, so if you if you if Jeff were to answer the question, the arch roll says it is a restraining. You shall not do any work or labor. Robert Alter says you should. It means you shall have a sacred convocation. Everett Fox, who's another Bible scholar, says. It is, parenthetically, a day of restraint, okay? The old JPS says it is a day of solemn assembly. And as Roberta points out, the new JPS translates it as um, a solemn gathering. It leaves out the word day and changes assembly to gathering. Okay, so, so what is this holiday? It's a day that is set aside for not doing work, stopping something, and coming together. Um, when I looked it up in a concordance, I found that the word is often used for, interestingly enough for us, for shutting out plague or disease, or keeping the, the sky closed to keep rain away, which is also ironic since Shmini Atzeret is when we begin to pray for rain. But it seems like the, the most likely definition of the word alone, Atzeret, is to be alone, to be confined within something. And when it's used most often in the prophets, not in the 
in the actual Chumash, it's generally about a vow. Um, and that vow is usually between um, a king and his people. So the vow would be pertaining only to the king's people. And this brings me to the Midrash that my teacher Eliezer Diamond cites. The rabbis generally understood this word to mean delaying. And I think in that way, it, it works with Shemini Atzeret because whether or not Shemini Atzeret is a part of Sukkot, we're delaying you know, we're delaying returning to the, the ordinary mundane world. And this is the Rashi, the Rashi uh, comment on Shemini Atzeret in Leviticus. I, I keep you back with me one more day. Okay, that's Rashi's translation of the word Atzeret. I keep you back with me, as in God, one more day. And then he gives this Midrash. This understanding of the word is similar to the case of a king who invited his children to a banquet, banquet for a certain number of days. When the time arrived for them to take their departure, the king said, children, I beg of you, stay with me one day more. It is so hard for me to part with you. I just love that. Okay. So think about it. You have this king. This lonely king, the king made this banquet. And for those of you who haven't been to a party in 18 months, let me remind you of what a big party might look like. There's wonderful food, entertainment. You're kind of mingling, going from room to room, spending time with different people. And it can go on for a long time. And this king living within this midrash wants that party to keep going. Yet, when it becomes time for the guests to leave with their family or the date, the king has to go back to the empty palace and to that isolated existence. The guests may love that king. They may have had a wonderful time being in the king's presence in his palace, but they need to live their life. And, you know, trips to the palace are for times when they need something or for these kinds of special occasions. And what my teacher intuited from Rashi's reference to the Midrash as related to Shemini Atzeret is that Shemini Atzeret may be a holiday where God is saying to us, be with me a little longer, fill my kingdom with your presence, tarry a little bit longer. Now, there's much in our tradition about God's love for B'nai Israel and for the Jewish people. And, you know, we, we can dismiss that pretty easily. We can dismiss it because life can be harsh um, and unforgiving. And to see God's love in that world or even the practice of embracing the Torah often feels more like the short-tempered Malkenu to the loving Avinu of the Midrash. But if we extend the metaphor a little bit further, this holiday is about extending our stay in that meaning, the reflective depth and purposeful living that we've had for the last, at least the last few weeks. And even for, for those of you who showed up today, I think a part of that flame has been, that was ignited um, on Rosh Hashanah, or for some of you, maybe even during the month of Elul when we heard the shofar in the morning, you know, that flame has been extinguished for many of us, or at least that light is really starting to dim. And if you're like me, that, that light, if it wasn't extinguished, it began to dim, you know, as soon as you took a bite of that bagel after the fast. We say it's enough, you know, resolute that we'll be better, that we can execute the plan that we came up with on Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur and how we're going to be better. You know, and the need for this additional holiday feels like overkill. It can be a burden. You know, we're done with the introspection. We're done with the davening. We're done with all of this time in shul. And I think this midrash is, is hinting that we need to refrain from that thinking, that we need to extend the work, and, the, and that that extending of the work is a privilege. And we're not to do the heavy lifting. I think that's the point of the story of the, of the banquet. God did all the work for us at this point. We just need to sit back and enjoy the hors d'oeuvres. 
And I think our tradition is telling us by making Shemini Atzeret a holiday of real significance, but without a distinct practice, that that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to sit back and enjoy that we did the work and that we're still here and that we don't need to return to our ordinary mundane lives just yet. And I think we can often be afraid of something like that. The promise of being better and being able to size up being better can be intimidating, um, both spiritually, but also emotionally. So today, all we do, we pray for rain. We say Yisker, which is usually pushed off until tomorrow. And I think Yisker was put on Shemini Atzeret because uh, in the Asra, you know, Simcha's Torah is a happy holiday. It's the day people come to. And if Yisker wasn't today, I think a lot of people would just skip it and come tomorrow. So Yisker was just put on there by, you know, it was kind of the, the ancient um, synagogue move to bring people to shul. But this lack of ritual and distinct practice is, is God or the tradition's way of saying, take a deep breath, embrace all the positive thoughts hopefully, that you had about yourselves in the previous weeks. Exhale and know that you have the power to do the work that you set out to do. You know, Tishrei is dominated by the emotional rigor and spiritual intensity. And today, we get to be in God's party. It's the gift to relax and relax within the serenity of community, tradition, and now memory. We take those thoughts, and we rise, we turn to page 330 for Yisker. <clears throat> Adonai ma'adam bateda ehu. Ben enosh vatecha shevehu Adam la hevel dama Yamav ketzel over Ma boker yatzitz vechalav La erev yamolel Lim not ya menu ken hoda Venavi leva chokma Adonai, what are human beings that you take account of them? Mortals that you care for them. Humans are as a breath, their days like a passing shadow. In the morning they flourish anew. In the evening, they shrivel and die. Teach us to count each day that we may acquire a heart of wisdom. As we continue with Yisker, 